so hey everyone so this is the part two session as part of our interview part one is already completed right so around 11 questions we completed now this is about the part two spring boot interview questions here guys okay now let me jump into 12th question right yeah so what is the difference between application dot property versus application dot yml file so uh, as part of uh, when you are uh, developing any applications right so usually a default file that is application dot property file here we used to write key comma value i mean to say uh, like the format of application dot property and dot yml is completely different so the difference is format and readability here means it is in the form of a key comma value format and dot yml is more structured and readable especially for the nested data here when you have lot of configurations reading and writing in key value we can write in dot yml format as well for simple example uh, let me show you here uh, maybe if i have an application uh, imagine if i take an application about uh, anything here okay uh, yeah this is about application dot properties it is in the form of key comma value if you want to convert into yaml file format right click and uh, there is an option called convert to yaml see dot properties to yaml file format if you do here it will be divided into yaml file configuration here in this way this is the difference only this is the difference guys nothing else but when you have a lot of configurations in terms of readability this is the best option here in your project we can use this file or this file both are same here but here a boiler plate code we can reduce here same key we can write multiple times and that we can avoid it here like let me show you some another project so you where you can see suppose uh, rest api if you go to application dot property file here if you see here spring dot data source spring dot data source for url username and password ddl auto show sql everywhere the spring is repeated here data source is repeated so this is in the property file format here now i can convert into dot yml format how it will be look like means right click let me take the backup of this one then i will be write it another way now see right click and spring convert to dot property to yaml file vice versa not possible see here conversion of yaml from properties see server port under spring data source under spring jpa for a data source key value key value key value see this is a readability it will be bare only that is the benefit more structured and a readable format that is the meaning here guys dot property versus dot yml okay next how to set up multiple environments in spring boot application like when you are running when you are running your application in a dev has a separate database configurations in the prod separate configurations in uat separate so everywhere database configurations will be different for each profile so in spring boot we have a concept called spring boot profiles we can set up different environments like a dev test and prod using the profiles concept here even as part of uh, here also the complete development as part of kubernetes development we are going for profiles based in which profile you want to activate everything when you are dockerizing spring boot application which profile i need to activate we need to configure like cloud profile dev profile uat profile that is in our handy so you need to create hyphen dev hyphen test and hyphen prod which profile you want to activate using spring dot profiles dot active equal to dev using this we can activate the profile this is the concept behind and implementation once you go through the project level you can understand how the setup will be available okay now next 
now difference between the jpa versus hibernet here means jpa lot of people not aware what is jp and what is hibernate jpa is a specification it's a interface it has a protocol and implementation is your hibernate hibernate is the implementation framework for jpa here it is provided by the oracle hibernate is given by the red hat so in jpa all standard annotations are available plus and hibernet specific annotations also available here like one to many many to one and hibernet mapped super class mapped subclass lot of second catchy level annotation second level catchy like rich features they already developed in the hibernet but in jpa functionality is limited to standard operations everybody can use the jpa and hibernet is the implementation framework so second level catchy interceptors that will not support in jpa we don't have that features but in hibernate we have so for one jpa we can have a multiple jpa providers like hibernate top link eclipse link some uh, different types of jpa providers we have the popular provider is hibernate as part of our spring boot also we have a module called data jpa module so this module what will happen it is the combination of on top of jpa and hibernate okay so that's why this is a difference between jpa versus hibernate okay next next what is the difference between the crud repository and jpa repository here so crud repository is the parent okay jpa is the child so if you want to perform minimum basic crud operations you want to save the data update the data fetch the data delete so basic these methods are available in the crud repository here on top of that we have a jpa jpa is extending the crowd repository and providing features you want to implement a pagination sorting patching those kind of implementations we have a jpa is useful for us and if we want just a basic operations then this is a sufficient if you need advanced features then you can go for jpa i say 99% as part of our projects we will use jpa only because jp has a more methods uh, by extending crowd repository as well okay now that is about the difference between the crowd repository and jpa repository here okay next what is lazy loading and eager loading basically this concept will come as part of your annotations one to many many to one whenever you want to fetch parent parent record child information should be loaded by default right whenever you load parent data i don't want to load the child data that is the meaning of lazy loading see lazy loading means data is loaded whenever we want okay eager loading means when you parent data is loaded immediately uh, whenever you have a parent record child information also you will get it here so that is lazy loading and eager loading here lazy is the good for the performance always when you fetch the parent for parent record you may have maybe hundreds of records so the performance will be a more it will take lot of time to fetch the data so uh, that is about the lazy loading is the best option here even whenever you are using one to many many to one one to one fetch type dot eager fetch date top laser now if you see uh, let me uh, show you here somewhere in our application uh, in user service if i go go to the model class go to the user mapper now see here fetch equal to fetch type dot lazy here if you make a eager so you will get the credential object here but i don't want that mechanism in real time scenarios definitely explicitly we should specify the cascading type fetch type and all the things as well okay all the things as part of our project development already we are covering uh, but as part of interview you should be aware what is lazy loading 
and eager loading in JPA here. That is how to perform database operations means about data JPA module in standalone application how to perform and then we will integrate into REST API development as well. Okay. Now that is about the lazy loading and eager loading in JPA. Next. Next about what is different between the REST controller and controller. Previously, at the rate controller is used for web applications. Wherever you want to return a JSP page, a HTML page, when you have a user interface, then we are going for controller annotation here. But when you want to develop RESTful API development, there is no UI at all then we can go for the REST controller annotation. It is used for REST APIs that return JSON data, not the views here. It is the combination of controller and response body. If you use these two annotations, this is not required. But if you are using REST controller annotation, yes, controller and response body will be available this is the difference between what does it mean response body means I am saying that I want to send as a JSON data not from the uh, <clears throat> like a, I don't have any uh, like a, you mean you need to tell that I am sending as a normal data only here. Okay, if you want to return a JSP page or HTML page then you should go for at the rate controller annotation here. That is the difference between the uh, REST controller and controller annotation. So now what is the difference between, okay, um, at the rate path variable and at the rate request param in Spring Boot applications here as part of REST API development. What is the difference between here? path variable is used to get the values from the url path see if you see id is a dynamic variable so we need to map this id to here so to get the dynamic data we are using the path variable here but if you are using request param it is used to get values from query string means how to represent the request param means like this see path variable this is the how you send the request but request param key comma value see id is my key 5 is the value so key comma value so what's the main difference means path variable is a mandatory but request param we can make mandatory and as well as optional also so as part of the pagination this request param is very very useful annotation to implement the pagination for your application here like even in the real time if you open any website like uh, imagine uh, this is our url see here this is called a variable this is a dynamic variable okay and if you open a flipkart.com Okay, if you try to open any a specific product, suppose I want to open the shoes, see here, uh, try to observe, this is called path variable, see, this is called your key and this is your value. If you have more than one request parameter and symbol and again key comma value, key comma value, in this way we can define the request parameters as well even if you try to write something here see here and enter so what happened no exception here again retrying retry now why because you modified in the url so if you modify in the url what will happen it's a gone case right so request parameters are kind of a optional parameters path variables are mandatory so when you want to retrieve data from database always we should go for path variable we should not go for request param yes we can go ahead also no worries but we should make it as a mandatory here that is the difference between path variable and request param in spring boot okay next what is the difference between the at the rate service versus at the rate repository. 
okay means service represents your business layer business logics we need to write repository to write your dao access so especially few people can ask a follow up question i don't want to use service i want to use component it will work or not yes it will work but that is a bad way of writing there is no special mechanism of exception handling for service annotation holding the business logic it is the sub child annotation as part of the main component here when you are writing business layers we should specify this annotation when you are writing dao layer repository methods at the rate repository it has a special use case it will handle database operations here data integrity violation exception unique constraint violation exception everything it will understand about this annotation here okay so in interview the follow up question definitely i don't want to use service i want to use component you will get any compile time or you can run successfully or not these kind of questions you may get completely it will work 100% but that is a bad way of writing okay now even if you go to our application if you go to our service layer we should specify uh this is implementation class right at the rate service annotation and if you go for the controller layer at the rate rest controller annotation if you click on rest controller annotation it is the combination of response body and controller here okay but if you use at the rate rest control instead of controller means it will not work again you need to specify response body here that is a uh, differences between these annotations here if you go for database layer here here you need to specify an annotation but this is completely optional here but in interview they will ask you this questions guys repository it's completely optional even though if you don't write it will work because i'm extending features from jpa repository here due to that here annotation is optional completely here okay that is about difference between the service and repository in the spring boot applications here okay all the things detail level already we are handling as part of rust api development here okay next now how to validate request data in spring boot rust api now whenever you are creating a record from your endpoint you need to validate the data first that is by using at the rate valid annotation we are using uh, here by using this annotation it will trigger the trigger validation and not null size email all these annotations will be activated for that we need to add one starter called validation starter uh, like uh, let me show you now if you go to our uh, development exception handling like let me go to controller layer now see here at the rate valid annotation as part of creating a new record in database we use post mapping at the rate valid you should specify and inside a dto classes we can specify the annotations not null size email like different kind of annotations we have so already we discussed and we given the proper notes as well what kind of annotations are applicable here so request validation this way we are doing front end validation and back end validation also we should able to do here okay so that's all for today's session almost 20 questions we covered next session will cover few more questions as well okay thank you